Hi guys, it's been two weeks and my first board and train is over. <laughs> I am taking this time now while I'm applying lotion before I head out to talk a little bit. So I will probably maybe go into detail later. Actually, I have time now. Um, my first board and train was kind of messy in regards to the clients not necessarily being the right type of people for this type of work where um, it's really important, really, really important for the owners to attempt to try to understand what you're teaching their dog, why you're doing what you do so that they can continue upholding the training once the dog goes home to them. And the impression that I continuously got from these owners was that First off, there was a language barrier somewhat. Um, they were foreign and their English wasn't really that good. So no matter how hard I tried to explain what I was doing, I still feel like they didn't. And that made things so much more difficult because I would be showing them like really great work throughout the week where their dog was attentive to me, listening, all the opposite compared to what he was before he arrived. And even when I was showing all of that, they were just um, not responding in a way that I liked. And um, I just felt like I couldn't work like that. It's really important for the owner to be a positive influence and they weren't. So they did want a second week for their dog, but I decided that I couldn't do it. And there were problems with crate training where the dog was breaking out. That was very, very stressful actually and anxiety inducing because I just felt like if I wasn't Johnny on the spot to calm the dog down while he was freaking out of the crate, then he would just break out. And I didn't want to allow him to continuously break out if possible. Ah, just a lot of bad combination of things. I was really, really unhappy last week actually. The most I had ever been this year for the most part. And it really, really sucked. I was crying all the time. Um, and I felt alone. I felt lonely for the first time. But that was obviously caused by all of the stuff that was happening. Normally I don't feel lonely like at all. Good thing to say, I am back to normal obviously now that the now that the dog is gone, I am back to normal and I am really thinking through how I want to proceed with things. So one valuable lesson I learned aside from picking the right client is making sure that I invest in my own um, well-constructed crate for bigger dogs. So I think any dog over 50 pounds, I'm going to have them use this crate that I will end up buying. Um, so I think for the most part, the good thing about that is that there's only two sizes for dogs that are as big as that. Um, I don't think I would end up getting a dog that's humongous, but for the most part there's the 50 to 70 pound range and then 70 to 90 pound range. And I'll just invest in those crates for my own use, not for me to give to the owner, of course. I'd say for now my approach is just going to be I'm going to leave my ad up, obviously continue responding to people and um, entertaining offers if anyone is interested. I did talk to a woman yesterday who has a Doberman that has shown a little bit of aggression to her, that has shown a little bit of aggression towards her other dogs, but I don't think this dog is dog aggressive. At first when I heard that and I read what she wrote, I was like, oh no, this dog is dog aggressive. But for the most part, what it sounds like is this dog tries to play with the other dogs in a very dominant pushy manner and the other dog doesn't like it, so the dog starts to push back and then that causes this dog to probably go a little bit over the edge in terms of pressuring the other dog and it can escalate. So that's what it sounds like it is, but just in general, um, I get the feeling that this woman is definitely on board for a board and train, which is really great. And I just, when I had my video call with her yesterday, she just seemed positive. I just had a much different, um, reaction to how I felt talking to her compared to the other clients. Um, she's getting her dog spayed this week, tomorrow actually, and so the dog has to recover before she will come here for training. So I sent her the contract yesterday and she accepted it 
and then I sent her the invoice. So hopefully we get that as soon as possible. That way I can order my crate and have it ready. I guess something that I just really want to keep in mind is that I don't need to be doing this all the time. At the beginning when I first started, I was thinking, oh, it would be ideal if I could have a dog to be trained every single week. But that could get a little hectic, especially if I'm balancing it with my real-time job. So when I think about how I schedule things, training a dog while I'm working isn't actually the worst thing. Also, another thing that I didn't get to experience with this previous dog is the fact that the second and third week of training will be much easier because the dog's mindset is going to calm down, they're going to be more well behaved, and they are going to be used to the structure, so eventually it's going to be routine. The way that I at least pictured it was I would wake up earlier than usual, walk the dog, long walk, that way they're tired out and then they're mentally stimulated at the same time, then I would crate them for a couple hours in the morning when I'm doing work, which is valuable training actually. They're gonna be learning to be calm in the crate during that time. And then during lunch hour, I would do another training session with them. And then maybe if I wanted to, and I felt like they were good enough for it, I would bring them outside here to place them, have them practice the place command, and then I would do a couple more hours of work in the early afternoon. And then maybe after that, I can crate them again or do another training session. It's just like there's a decent amount of downtime when it comes to dog training that is still actually training, but that downtime allows me to address my work. Um, I think the main issue with that would just be, you know, if the dog is whining in the crate a lot, it takes away my focus from work and I have to address that once in a while if they keep doing it, but I would be able to make it work it's just all about managing my emotions because like I mentioned, I had anxiety with the dog whining in the crate and attempting to break out. But if I buy a proper crate for that, then that should help resolve that issue. And yeah, so I feel like things will progress forward just fine. It was just a little scary to me how unhappy I was last week, which is always upsetting to me because for those of you that have watched me for a while, you know how much I value being happy from living a simple basic life and it um, really felt like I wasn't myself last week with how unhappy and upset and crying so much that I was doing. That sentence didn't really make sense. But um, yeah, I'd say that is the gist of it. Um, the awesome thing is just that I have people that are replying to my ad every once in a while and expressing interest. So. To me, the way that I see it is all I ever need is that one person to actually go through with booking a training session. And um, with this woman, if she pays my invoice, then she already occupies three weeks, which is a long, long period of time. And actually, if she books that, then I will pretty much be positive in how much I have spent on my business so far, which is wonderful. But there's always certain things that I still need to probably accumulate over time if I want things to go more smoothly. I was really doubting myself and questioning whether I should continue with dog training after last week, but after taking a couple of days to recalibrate, I feel like I still have that excitement there and I do feel confident I have what it takes. It's just that last week was a bad combination and also I felt like one week was very little time. I noticed that he was starting to switch mindsets a little bit, but when the owners came to pick him up, he was back to his old self. And a lot of that is also because the owners treated him in the same way where they were just like showering affection on him and all of that. And because I didn't really have the best communication with them, I just felt kind of defeated in reinforcing to them a lot of the concepts and logic that I applied to the dog. Some of which includes, you know, don't excite your dog or if they're doing a command, don't just break them off of it. I'll continue to move forward with it, but definitely in a less urgent manner where if I don't have clients for a couple of weeks, no big deal. I'll do my low key life where I work during the day, do a workout, watch a movie, go out for a walk, go out to nature. It's just, there's so much to enjoy in life. All right, so now I'm going to go pick up my custom tees 
So I got a crop top, and then I got a t-shirt, v-neck, and then I got a cap. So I will show you guys what that looks like. Let's go. <laughs> My kitties. More kitties. Hi, I am somewhere random in Escondido near this Lake Hodges recreation area and I drove out here because I decided to do housekeeping this morning. So my housekeeper got here around like 9.15. She was supposed to be there at 9 o'clock and I just need to be out of the house while she's cleaning. So um, I think it's going to be taking like close to three hours. So right now it is 10.25, 10.25, which means I have an hour and a half to burn more. Uh, oh, oh no, 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 I don't think that's anything. Are you hot? Oh fuck, oh fuck. All right, I think I need to move along because Riley is facing the side, the side is, uh, She's getting hit by the sun, and it's actually pretty hot on her face. But I'm just exploring a bit today. I don't really know what to do while I have to be out of the house. So it kind of sucks. I'm just driving around aimlessly, but I've never been to this area before. So it's nice to check out something new. But I do have to also make sure that I don't stay anywhere too hot. And unfortunately, there's no shade here, so I got to keep moving. Hi, guys. Um, it's Thursday, so the weekend is almost here. Although, to be honest, today I actually thought it was Friday just because my week has felt kind of long, I guess. Or maybe I've just been really excited to... Um, hi, Sammy. I've been really excited to have a normal week after what happened last week. So, for now, I am trying out just using the mic for this segment right here because my AC is on and it's pretty hot today so I don't want to turn it off just to record and talk a little bit but let me provide some random updates that I'm kind of looking forward to so first off I have a woman who reached out to me for private lessons she has a three-month-old husky and our first lesson is going to be on Monday um, Samuel <laughs> it's going to be on Monday at 4 30 so for now, it seems like her issues are the dog is barking a lot and also she's in a biting stage, which totally makes sense. The dog teeths a lot. So those are things that will need to be addressed. She decided to buy a package of five lessons, which is great. You know, the more the better. And I am, you know what? I kind of need to draft a little approach yeah, I think that would be a good idea. Write down some lesson plans, how I plan to spread out those five hours. One hour is actually a good amount of time because when I was training Remo, who was an adult, there were times where I felt like nearing 30 minutes of constant repetition started to feel like a really long time. But you know, maybe after a while for a dog that is really enjoying the work and, um, who is really attentive during the whole thing, then maybe it doesn't really feel like a long time. But the good thing is that aside from obedience that I will be teaching, of course, I will for the most part be addressing house structure. And one of them actually is going to be the crate. So I think I will definitely have to mention the crate on the first day because that is something I'm gonna want her to practice on a daily basis. That is extremely, extremely important. And um, she is saying that for now the dog is whining a lot in the crate, but I need to ask her specifics like how long are you leaving him in there? Um, do you crate her when you're not home? Stuff like that. It just has to be consistent. Um, it doesn't really do much if you crate your dog for a couple minutes a day and then once they're whining you're like, oh I can't take this anymore, let me let them out. It doesn't teach them anything. So that is coming up. And uh, I'm going to have to ask them how they want those lessons. It doesn't really matter to me how those are spread out. It's just five and then whatever times work well for us, she can spread, she could spread them out week by week or it could be every few days. So we'll see. Um, the other woman for the board and train, she hasn't put down her deposit for a reservation yet. So I am feeling a little antsy about that because 
it would just be nice if people who showed interest would just, you know, follow through. So for her, because she hasn't placed her deposit, I am skeptical about calling her a board and train client just yet, even though I would really, really like to go through with that one. It just seems very intriguing to me. The Doberman is 80 pounds. I've never worked with a breed that's not a Husky before, so I would love to see how that would work out. But um, she's slow with communication, very slow lately, taking days to respond, so that's a little problematic. Um, on the other hand, I today may have made a very poor choice. So ever since I started this business, I've been spending a lot of money. Oh my God, Sammy. I've been spending a lot of money. So my credit card bill right now is pretty high, but I need a proper crate for Riley in the car. So I could use a plastic crate and just put it on the seat where I kind of originally planned to for this expensive crate that I ended up buying. So I decided to buy an impact collapsible dog crate. And the main reason I wanted to do that was because my car, the issue with it and having Riley in a crate, a proper sized crate is that the ones that fit her are too tall. So they designed them to be like 30 inches tall or something like that her length is 34 inches and um yeah it's it's just my prius the ceiling from the trunk area is about like 24 inches so the crate is too tall so the only way i can properly fit a crate of that size is in the back seat when the seats are up and putting her sideways that's something I'm not a big fan of. I do prefer for her to be facing me, like front, back, along with the car, but she's gonna need to be perpendicular because I need that extra height that the seat provides when they're up. So she's going to be there. Um, what I like about this crate is that it's collapsible. So um, instead of worrying about whether the crate will fit in the car through the door, I can just collapse it, put it inside the car, and then I will uncollapse it inside the car and then it should be pretty smooth like that another thing that i got baited from is their facebook i was just browsing it out of curiosity and i saw a post of theirs where they had a pink crate and um normally i'm not really one that reaches out out of curiosity to ask if i can customize something into pink um that is my favorite color i think it's very obvious that it's my favorite color i have a lot of pink shit got a water bottle I've got these Bluetooth earbuds that are pink what else is pink Riley Z color is pink um, my pet duffel thingy that I've been using for training that is pink also my freaking water heater um, water boiler thingy is pink I just I just love the color so if I see pink I'm like fuck I gotta have it so they had a pink crate up on their post and I was like, oh, I had no idea that you could customize the color to be um, something like that because I saw that they had a variety of color options. None of them were pink though. So I was like, oh, it must not be available. But since I saw that, I was like, oh my God, I gotta have it. So I decided to place the order for it because I reached out to customer service and they, re they responded really quickly back to me. And originally i was going to wait to make this purchase after i get the board and train money that way it can cancel it out because it's fucking expensive this crate is uh this crate is 900 dollars. but the thing is about the car is these crates are very durable and they provide extra protection for your dog during a car crash and i do think that is extremely important because if i were to use a plastic crate and we got into an accident, she would probably be dead because those plastic crates, they're gonna just break. They're gonna, um, what, what, what do you call it? Like when two things like push into it, it's just gonna crumble and she's, safety is really important for the car. And just lately for a long time now, I have just been using her older crate, which is slightly smaller. And I've just been having her lie in it without the top on and I just don't like it because she's kind of cramped in there 
So her paws can't stretch out openly and they kind of, she ends up having to bend one like this and it's just, it's too small for her. So I have been unable to find a solution for a while because I wanted one of these more expensive crates, but since they're so expensive, I was like, I can't really risk buying it yet because of how pricey they are. But today I got baited in by a pink crate and I did plan on buying it. Um, I guess what I can say is if I have more interest in people wanting me to help train their dogs, then getting the amount for the crate back won't be that much of a struggle. Anyways, I am super excited to receive it. I'm definitely going to make a video on it. I'll probably do a review on it because review videos are nice. Sometimes people really want to see a visual of what it looks like and how it performs and just overall um, there aren't a lot of reviews for this specific crate. I tried to look some up on YouTube myself, so maybe I can fill that gap. Aside from that, aside from that, I don't have much going on with me right now. I'm hot. I did my workout already today. It's Thursday. It's nearly the weekend. I don't really know what I plan on doing. Nothing exciting. Um, yeah, I just wanted to chat with you guys. A little bit really quick and hope everyone is having a good time right now hope they're happy hope you're healthy yeah I've been doing pretty good since the dog went home so I'm really happy to report that but I think uh, that should be the updates for now and I will let you guys know if anything else comes up I really hope that the owner will let me record the training session with the puppy. I will definitely ask her, but of course, if she's uncomfortable with it, I won't do it. But I do hope so, because I would love to have more content from a puppy perspective.